Marco is the composer for Free Solo. Of course, he's done a lot of other movies and television, too. Free Solo is one of those rare projects that was not only eligible at the Oscars this year, but it's also eligible at the Emmys uh, this coming summer. So he'll be on the ballot for uh, score for Free Solo. And that's from Nat Geo. Marco's been an Oscar nominee for 310 to Yuma and The Hurt Locker, uh, an Emmy nominee for David and Lisa, and some of the other movies you've seen him uh, or heard his scores for, Scream, World War Z, Wolverine, Quiet Place, and Logan. So let's all welcome him once again, Marco Beltrami. Thank you. Now we just mentioned a whole lot of uh, scripted movies, fictional movies that you've uh, composed for. What, what was the difference for you composing a documentary? Uh, well, I think the first thing is that this was way scarier than any other of the other movies that I've done. Um, I think that uh, it's very similar in many ways. You're, you're uh, doing the same things. Uh, one of the differences is that there's a lot of uh, narration that goes through uh, a documentary and sort of keeping like a, a motor running through but not stepping on the dialogue through a lot of it. I mean, there's some places where the score can open up a little bit, but through a lot of it, um, you know, it's, it's um, more of a continuous backdrop. When I went back to look at reviews, because this was out, of course, last year, two words kept popping up over and over in reviews in relation to your score, and they were pure adrenaline. Is that, is that the type of thing you had in mind when you were writing? I mean, you can't help but feel that when you when you watch the the movie. Um, I think the thing for me, what I was really trying to do musically for this is that I felt the the main character. I, for those of you who've seen the movie, um, um, he's a really interesting guy and gets all his energy um, and sort of his lifeblood from climbing. But it's also the thing that can kill him. So it's like this yin and yang thing that um, is perpetually going through the movie. And um, so musically, I wanted to represent that somehow. Um, so that, that's really what I thought of. The adrenaline thing, I, it, it, I, I didn't have to supply that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but as I was re-watching and listening to your score, it seemed like in the most tense moments of the movie, you kind of backed off a little bit because I, I'm, I'm guessing because the visuals were, 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 you didn't need to punctuate those. No, no, I mean, it, it sort of, the, the biggest score moment is probably the, the end, the final climb, because um, it's a pretty long sequence, it's about 20 minute long sequence, and um, you, want, you want to feel like, there's, he's achieving these goals that 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 um, that he broke down earlier in the in, in the film, talking about you know I have to reach here, then the next place. So you want to have um, you want to feel like he's achieving this and getting somewhere, but you want to keep the, the tension uh, as an overall thing, so that you're not sure you know you don't want to feel too comfortable. So um, that that was probably the the biggest challenge musically. How. As you're working with the directors, what, how do you even get started? What's your first step when you're going to start in this project in particular? Um, I mean, I first of all, the, the, the director, Jimmy Chin, uh, he's an amazing climber himself and has done other great documentaries. Uh, one, I think two years prior, was called Meru, which was an amazing doc. Um, and so I was just really curious about the whole process, um, what it was like to to be on the on the mountain and climbing, and um, just sort of get inside his head a little bit, um, so that I would have some sort of emotional backdrop for what I was what I was doing, because I was sort of you know um, providing an, an unspoken emotional. Um, Accompaniment to the to the film, I think. A favorite cue? Do you have a, a, a something that that just really memorable for you in this particular movie? Um, I mean, the biggest music moment is probably the you know in the final climb. 
as I was reading your bio, you uh, owe a decent amount of credit for your career to Jerry Goldsmith, mm -hmm. who I think everybody has loved his music all these years, but for decades. Tell us, just tell us about uh, working with him and, and what he was like. I mean, uh, it was it was amazing. I came from a um, more of a, a concert music background, um, and uh, you know, from a more of an academic, I, I guess, um, origin. And it was really common to sort of, I think, hide behind complexity in music. And the thing with Jerry, the thing that always struck me is that he was all about making things as simple and economical as possible. And um, that's something that I strive for now. Like I went, uh, his Oscar winning score and we're not here to talk about him, but um, <laughs> his scoring score was like based on, on three notes and and um, from the Omen, and uh, so I, I've always been impressed by that. The simplicity he taught you. Yeah, tell us this movie won you know best documentary feature this year at the Oscars. Tell us your reaction when that happened. I mean, I was thrilled. I was really happy. I I, I really liked the movie a lot. Um, you know, a lot of the movies I work on, I don't really like that much. But this one, I really, oh, okay. this, this one, I really liked a lot. Now, which are the ones I listed <laughs> off? No, <laughs> all those I like. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I mean, it's it, I've done a lot of movies, and it, it's um, it, you know, it, you take some for different reasons. But this, I, I really was excited about uh, from the first time I saw it, and the, and and I love working with the filmmakers, and uh, I think that you know when it when it it's passionate like that, it, it, it makes the difference. On this particular movie, what, uh, as you started working on it, you wrote the score. Tell us about the process of recording it. Yeah, it wasn't a, a huge group, I think like 30 musicians. And um, uh, for the most part, it was, you know, fairly understated. So there was only a few moments that we really needed a, to have. Like, yeah, documentary a budget's not going to be too large. Yeah. What's the biggest score you ever worked on in terms of sheer size and scope? Oh, um, I mean, it seems like budgets used to be bigger uh, in the past. Um, I don't know, some, there's been some big ones. Like, What's up next? Um, the thing that I'm most excited about is a movie called Ford vs. Ferrari that comes out in November. Give us a quick quick thumbnail of what that movie is. Uh, it's a story of um, 1966 uh, Ford beating Ferrari at Le Mans and uh, the story of uh, Carroll Shelby and his driver Miles and how they how they how they did it and um, their relationship and it, I, I, it's an awesome movie. Tell when we met earlier. Tell them what you said about your lead actor. Oh, uh, um, I, I mean, I heard I heard this that that he um, so it has uh, it has um, Christian Bale and um, and Matt Damon in it. And uh, from what I heard, uh, Christian said that it, he thinks it's one of his best roles. So that's saying something. Yeah. Well, thank you, Marco. All right, thank you. We'll see you again in a few minutes on okay. the panel. All right.